Angry young Catholics attack police with anything at hand on the streets of Belfast. Bottles and rocks soon become fence posts and then firebombs. The motivation for the dissident violence, and particularly in attacking the police service, is to show that Northern Ireland is not a normal society, to show that the conflict is not over. For them, the conflict in Ireland can never be over for as long as Northern Ireland remains part of the United Kingdom. The IRA and provisional IRA were once the heroes of these young men. But since joining the peace process, the IRA is seen, at least to some in these areas, as having sold them out. Now, new Republican splinter groups are moving in to fill the vacuum. Since the worst of the sectarian violence and the subsequent power sharing in the Northern Irish Parliament, the territory has tried to reinvent itself as a place of peace, not conflict. But according to terror specialist Martin Frampton, that's only what we see on the surface. Particularly, I think, over the last three to four years, if one looks at what's happened, attention flits to Northern Ireland when a policeman is killed or seriously injured, but then uh, flits away again and, and the gaze is lost. And, and so people ignore the fact that bombs are being left at banks, police stations are uh, mortared or people are trying to blow up uh, police patrols. And, and so there is a, a lack of attention, I think, to the, to the level of activity that's underway. The standoff reaches flashpoint when the Protestants noisily celebrate the moment when William of Orange defeated the Catholics and entrenched English Protestant rule here in the 17th century. To mark that battle, the Protestant Orangemen see it as their right to march through Belfast. And that includes sections of the city that are Catholic and nationalist. Under the guard of the Police Service of Northern Ireland, or PSNI, the Protestant orders march past the staunchly Catholic Ardoin district. Some Catholics silently protest. While others are cornered by the police as they try to confront the marchers. It doesn't take long for the anger to boil over. These riots are increasingly being used as the recruitment ground for a new generation of dissident Republican groups that do not agree with the power-sharing peace process. The way in which the peace process was sold by Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness to their followers in the 1990s was that this peace process would advance the cause of Irish unity in a way that the Provisional IRA's campaign could not. By about 2005, 2006, people were coming to feel that this wasn't the case, that they had, in their own words, been sold a pup, that the peace process wasn't delivering on, as they call it, Republican objectives, and that uh, they should, to some extent, go back to what they knew best. They felt that Sinn Féin was trapped in a partitionist uh, solution, that Sinn Féin was trapped in Stormont, trapped administering British rule in Northern Ireland, uh, that they had moved away from classical Irish republicanism, and that therefore what was, what was needed was a return to, if you like, the pure form of the faith. Snaking across Belfast's most volatile suburbs, these barriers are called peace lines. They were erected to protect the residents on both sides from each other. But they also serve to reinforce the already deeply entrenched sectarian divisions. Eddie Campbell is from the Catholic side. There is young lads in them communities that is joining 
other organisations, such as the Real IRA, such as Oglina Hearn, such as the, the 32s and whatever else you have going on in them areas. There's that many different groups in them anyway. But I mean, people know that there's unjust being done in their communities there. And that's why these people, these young lads are joining up to what they're doing. It's these new dissident Republican groups that are being blamed for the surge in violence across Northern Ireland. In 2007, there were 12 instances of Republican-related uh, punishment, shootings or bombings. Now, I think by the end of 2010, there was 99 in that year. So it's, it's, it's quite an extraordinary jump. Yeah, it's a significant jump. But again, it's not, it's not um, we shouldn't necessarily blow this out of proportion. These are still figures significantly below the worst years of the Troubles, uh, and it's not approaching that. But what it reflects is certain small communities, uh, if you like, Republican, what I call heartland communities, a kind of subculture within Northern Ireland that appears to have fallen under um, growing levels of control by the dissident Republican fraternity. They'll see themselves being paid off the road, they'll see them being lifted and arrested, then they'll come out and they'll go, well, throwing bricks and stones, the police chief's not going to do it. So they'll want to get a wee bit more bigger stuff, so they'll join these organisations to try and get their hands on bombs, weapons, and so these young lads are, are young, they've never come through it before. So they've got a wee bit more guts and they'll talk about and they'll do whatever they have to do. Thomas Campbell has lived all his life in the Ardoin. I think that we'll have a lot there of, of young people who's join, going to join it because they think that the Republican movement has sort of left the communities to defend for themselves. Uh, we never see Republican, the Republican leadership, which would have been sent for you. You don't see them now from election day till election day. So these young lads look now for new leadership. Who they see these organisations as their new leaders. One of the main targets of the dissident movement are young Catholics who join the new police service of Northern Ireland, or PSNI. Since 2007, there's been a resurgence in attempted shootings and bombs planted under several officers' cars. Most didn't explode, but two officers have been killed and one seriously injured. In March 2009, policeman Steve Carroll was shot dead. The Continuity IRA said they killed him. His wife Kate is still struggling with the loss. It's just like living in hell because um, there's birthdays, there's anniversaries, there's watching your family, there's watching my son who is absolutely distraught at times whenever, you know, he, he wants his dad there for certain things and he just doesn't have his dad there to talk to. Even myself, if, if I'm ill, um, the first thing I want is my husband with me, you know. Um, I'm sort of on my own, even with a house full of people. The police service is now on high alert for more killings, as new recruits seem willing to take up the dissident cause. I'd ask them to consider what they are doing. Uh, do they really want this? Why are they doing it? Um, what difference is it going to make in their lives, other than to hurt the lives of other people? But 40 kilometres outside Belfast, in the town of Lurgan, there's not much sympathy. Instead, we find clear signs of support for the group that killed Kate's husband, the Continuity IRA. Well, the, the police come in here and they raid houses and they smash doors in, smash your house up, take people out of their houses at five, six o'clock in the morning, arrest them, hold them for maybe three, four, five days, and then let them go with no charges. So I don't understand why they do that, like, to be honest with you. Some say that uh, They've changed from the RUC, it's a new policing force, but personally I think that uh, the policies remain the same. They've stopped and searched young kids going to school, 12 and 13 years of age, 10 and 11 years of age, searched their school bags, took their phones. What sort of a police force do you reckon that is? Like? To take an example of Lurgan, which there's some sort of housing estates there which seem to have seen sustained, persistent episodes of rioting. I think there you have a classic example of kind of socioeconomic um, uh, dislocation, if you like, people who lived in quite deprived urban communities, so-called sink estates, whose situations really can be paralleled in other urban communities across the United Kingdom. If you look in London, but higher um, employment, uh, yeah, high employment, you know, low levels of opportunity, um, poor, relatively poor housing, and so forth. Um, exactly the same as you would find if you went down to Brixton in London or Toxteth in Liverpool. What's different is they are given explaining an explanatory narrative by an older generation which says, well, you know, the reason why 
your lives are like this is because you live in a uh, in an occupied state that Britain is still occupying Ireland and that helps them make sense of their world it gives it has a real power to it Back in Belfast, they're burning cars. It may only be a small group, but high unemployment, mixed with feelings that they've got to fend for themselves, is a toxic combination. Many of those in power now used violence to get there, which means they are now powerless to stop the rage and retribution. They don't really know what to do about it because Sinn Féin can't do anything other than say, um, do as we say, not as we did, because um, a very large proportion of Sinn Féin representatives at Stormont are former prisoners. And obviously Martin McGuinness, the Deputy First Minister, was twice convicted of IRA membership um, in the 1970s. So they can't say this is wrong because then they would say what they were doing was wrong. Um, and so their condemnations are very ineffective. So really none of them can say what they need to say, which is simply we must uphold the rule of law and defend basic decency. But analysts point out that the new dissident movement is made up of veteran IRA members who feel left behind by the peace process. What the dissidents have managed to establish is because there's been an influx of former provisional IRA members in certain key areas, whether it's in East Tyrone or Londonderry or Belfast. You have former members of the provisional IRA, known Republicans, people who have a certain status in those you know, local communities, who are held with a certain degree of reverence, looked up to, certainly they, they would be held with a mixture of respect and I suspect fear, um, and they are the people who are uh, able to control to some extent the actions of those youths and it's it's very telling the kind of shift in power that's occurred and just like the old days they're using these riots to test or what they call blood potential new recruits now that's not to say that every youth involved in rioting is uh, going to go ahead and become a dissident Republican gunman or explosive expert. But invariably, I think that this can be a kind of first rung on the ladder to uh, sort of greater degrees of involvement. No one is saying the threat is big enough to undermine peace in Northern Ireland. Most people want an end to violence. But the volatile mix of angry young men with no jobs being ready recruits for a cause they can believe in creates a danger that's not being taken seriously enough by those on both sides who have used violence themselves to get power. It would be a welcome shock to me if uh, more members of the security services weren't killed uh, in the next uh, 18 months. Um, the dissidents seem to have a capacity and a drive to operate and carry out acts of serious violence, which I don't uh, anticipate to diminish seriously in the immediate future. So I fear the immediate future will be more of the same.